You want to like them, but you can't. Are you listening? What? Are you listening? Did you bring me on this show to insult me? Yeah. Uh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh. Yeah. Hey, y'all don't want it with us, uh. man. You say gangsters over here, Drake man. Gangsters. Uh. Uh. Yeah, good morning and welcome back. That's right, you are listening to Scout Team Radio. We bring it to you hot and live each and every morning, Monday through Friday. I am one of your gracious hosts. They call me Loudbeard. You are the most egotistical, yeah, yeah. I get it. I, I get it. Met. Why do you keep saying that? And then the man on the other microphone. He is a great American. He is a great patriot. He bleeds red, white, and blue. America. America. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. It is your boy, Chris America, coming to you live this Tuesday. It is now July the 9th, Loudbeard, 2019. And, you know, when we were doing the show yesterday, I was just speaking like we were in Guam or something. That it was July 9th. Yeah, Both you were fast-forwarding to another time zone. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, yeah. what you were doing. I was just, you know, helping out our Guam friends, all the American military members that listen in Guam. I'm talking to you guys. Happy July 10th. The listeners of all... All over the Different world. Different places. Loudbeard. Yeah, they're all over everywhere. Chris America. This is unbelievable. And you know, Loudbeard, you should not interrupt that lady. That was very rude of you. That was very egotistical and self deluded of you to interrupt that lady while she was talking. Yep. I you know, sometimes I get like that. And that's okay, Chris America. It's okay. So Loudbeard, um we were all sports yesterday for the most part because we had so much going on that we didn't go over your your fourth of July weekend. Did you you worked on Friday or no? Yeah, I worked on Friday. So oh, that I had a, yeah, yeah. It's okay. I can live with that every once in a while. It wasn't too bad of a, a Friday. The or, you know right after the fourth, it was kind of quiet. It was a little bit more casual. We did a jeans yeah. day just to make it a little less formal. It wasn't a bad day. Um, but yeah, you know what? I'm glad you're asking about this, Chris America. You know, did you wear we your did a little bit jeans? No, no bedazzling. No, oh, okay. um, no uh, infliction jeans or whatever yeah. those people wear. Yeah, Th- those are not my style. Whatever. Infection. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You have them, so you know what they're called. I have no idea what they're called. So the, I had a little bit of an unorthodox Fourth of July. You know, when it falls in the middle of the week, it's a little different. It's a little bit different, you, like, especially celebrate? if you got to work the next Did morning. Did you celebrate Mother Russia? You communist. Uh, yeah, sure. Chris America. See, I I feel like the the listeners out there they they get your shtick. You you call yourself Chris America because you know they know that you're truly Russian. It's actually Kristoff America, and you you sit here and act like you're all patriotic, but you try to call me out on being communist. But no, no, it, it's it's definitely you. It's definitely you. Anyway, so that's a different note. We'll get into that another day. Um, you know, God bless America. And so I did celebrate fourth of july a little bit a little bit differently so we did a little family uh binging on netflix because the new season of stranger things came out now chris america is this a show that you have gotten into or that you have watched at all stranger things i uh started this week with landon okay gotcha yeah i gotcha watch so episode uh, one mm-hmm. it was pretty good okay Okay, We're doing a so, wider. She's she's still looking okay. Not as hot as she used to be, but okay. Still time okay. happens. Yeah, age time. age time thing. Yeah, that's a thing. All right. So uh, this is something that we've watched um, from the beginning. It's only three seasons in, but first season came out. I watched it. Uh, my daughter ended up watching it, and I think slowly my wife came around and watched it. So we've all watched it as a family, and my daughter's been absolutely obsessed with it. T-shirts, you know, binge watching it over and over again. She was so excited for the very first episode of this season three to come 
on so she could watch it. She was been talking about it all week, all week. So for July 4th, we said, okay, we'll go ahead and we'll watch the season. So we binge watched the entire Stranger Things season on our July 4th. And there was fireworks in there, so that makes it patriotic, Chris America. So what do you think? Does that sound like a hell of a celebration to you or what? You know, anytime you're spending time with family, especially your family where one of your daughters is off to college, you know, in one of the southeastern states, I don't want to, you know, narrow down the search for DD. So I'll just say southeastern states. You know, she's about a few hours away or an air, airplane flight away. So, yeah, you got to. You gotta relish these summers now because you're not gonna get many summers like that like this with her either. Like those are winding down to where this summer she comes back, maybe next summer, and then usually by the junior senior year, that whole coming back during the summer thing kind of disappears, don't you think? Yeah, it does. Now she didn't she didn't watch it with us. The youngest watched it with oh, us. The older okay. two, okay. They they're too cool for their parents. They hang out with their friends. That's that's kind of what happens. Uh, unfortunately, See, I, kinda, I picture Dee Dee being the the shirt wearing no, wearing. No, type. no, no, no. She does okay. not care for it at all. She likes this Bachelorette. Is, this is the daughter that my son and your daughter have. Like we have a dowry on, right? Like I'm supposed to give yeah. you like fifty <laughs> goats and everything. Yeah, that's that's the one. So. Uh, yeah, and she's young, and for she's eleven, and well, watching that, the earlier seasons at like eight years old was probably yeah. um, too young to be watching it. But she loved it, and we're we're kind of easygoing parents. We're the, we're not those parents that are like, oh, you can't do this, you can't you can't watch these. This is too scary. We let her experience life. It's definitely you know, um, you know when it's it comes, good. When it comes to scary movies, I I really just think it depends on the kid. Some kids are just really into it, like you're mentioning your daughter is. My son was really, like, he loved it, um, so he kept watching more while I had to go, you know, do stuff around the house. And he just watched it by himself, and he, he loved it. He loves that scary stuff where other kids, not so much. Okay. Well, uh, we do have some tweets coming in here. We've got some really good information. Uh, Jenny of Ohio or Jenny of the Ohio, either way. Scout Team Radio, little known fact about Stranger Things 3. The actress who plays Robin is the daughter of Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke. Hashtag mind blown. I'll be honest with you. I had no idea. And now that you say that, my mind is blown. So does she look wow. hot like you would think the daughter of Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke would look? I didn't even know Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke were a thing. Yeah, actually, I didn't know that either. Um, Maybe he's one of those like one night stands that kind of turned into a Hollywood party. Like, cause how old is Ethan Hawke? I feel like Uma Thurman's way older than Ethan Hawke, right? No, no, Ethan Hawke's old. Really? He's an old guy. Yeah, because Uma oh, Thurman's yeah. been around for a minute. And they both have. They were both big time stars in the early nineties, you know. Were they really? Uh, I guess I just didn't really notice Ethan Hawke until he was in, like, uh, the Bourne movies. Is when I think I first noticed Ethan Hawke. Uh, wasn't he in Reality Bites with Winona Ryder? Am I maybe, maybe I'm mixing but up actors? I, I think no, so. No, that he, was early nineties, right? I don't know. Yeah, which is again, we're playing the Kevin Bacon game. It's all full circle. Ethan Hawke, like, Winona when I think Ryder, of Ethan Hawke, and like, then I don't put him in the age things. of like Brad Pitt. Because like Brad, Brad Pitt was big early '90s. That's you know, but Hollywood age Hollywood ages are hard to to measure. Mike Tyson's wife's bed. Ooh, that's a bad place to be. Which her name was Robin too, wasn't it? I think it was. Boom! Full circle. That's what we full do here circle. at Scout Team Radio. That's how professional we are. Scott Kaiser also tweeting in. Just finished season three last night. Infinitely better than season two. And how about them getting on the mid credit scenes? MCU influencing the world. Yeah, when we were done with the final episode, uh, my wife and my daughter are like, we can't stop watching. There's going to be an extra scene. And I was like, what? And they did it. They did perfect MCU style where they teased the future, and it just it left, you, it left you on a cliffhanger, and it was amazing. I'm not going to give any spoilers out. I am not into that whole spoiler thing, but I just wanted to let you know that, yeah, this season was outstanding. And I do want to say, Chris America, we talked about this a couple weeks ago about how Netflix really has to step up their game because there's all these additional streaming services. Yeah. And I did not mention Stranger Things when we had that conversation. Stranger Things comes out, and in the first four days, 40 million households had started watching or had watched an episode of Stranger Things. And 
18 million had completed the entire season, according to their analytics. 40 million households, Chris America, in the first four days, blowing the ratings out of any other movie or series or anything on Netflix ever, blowing it out of the water. Hallelujah. Now, do you think, because I think this is the way the HBO network is, do you think Netflix will turn into that where they'll get, you know, Netflix for maybe a few weeks just so they can watch a, a show like Stranger Things or whatever, and then once it's over, they kind of log out, just like they did with Game of Thrones. They know a lot of people who are like, all right, time to cancel my HBO subscription now that Game of Thrones is over. And then when the next season would roll around, all right, time to get HBO Network. Yeah, I, I think that's a little, little far. I mean, a little crazy. A lot of people did do that, and I saw. And for some reason, I disconnected for a second there. But I'm back. I'm back. The um, I don't know that I, I. I think that's a good thing is to cancel, resubmit, commit, cancel, resubmit. I get it for one show, but HBO does a good job of like having a bunch of different types of shows. So there's a lot of good stuff on there. Original programming. Uh, Chernobyl was another one that um, got a lot of hype. Uh, there's a new show called Euphoria, which I've watched the first couple episodes. It's pretty pretty amazing. Um, so I think I get it that you just like one show, that's it, and then you're canceled. But it, it's got a lot of other great programming, and I think Netflix is the same way. I think your comparison's spot on, where they just have to continue to churn out really good programming to keep that excitement going, because otherwise people will cancel the subscription if – they aren't satisfied with what's coming. Now, one news story that you may enjoy coming out of Netflix that has helped, I guess, encourage this point that you're trying to make, Chris America. There is a new movie slated to come out on Netflix. It's called Red Notice. Now, it was originally going to be done by Universal, but Netflix took it over. It's going to be the most expensive movie ever made on Netflix, and it's going to star Ryan Reynolds, The Rock, and Gail Godot. And it is going to be I'm a in. super movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. This is Ryan what Reynolds. Netflix has to do. <laughs> I'm surprised Kevin you Hart's like not him. in there, though. Like, once you re mentioned The Rock, I was waiting for you to say, and Kevin Hart. Yeah. It, it's those says two it's don't do anything without each other now. Action adventure movie about some art thief or something. I don't know really the details. and I, There's not a trailer out or anything. But it's going to be the big Netflix blockbuster. But this is what Netflix has to do, right? They have to come up with these big movies. Now, that Adam, Adam Sandler came out with a movie with Jennifer Aniston called The Murder Mystery. Um, that, I guess, in the first few days had about 30 million views. So that's really? another movie that really caught a lot of people's attention. Yeah, they said in the first, like, uh, uh, Stranger Things had 40 million views. That movie had 30 million views. So that, it's crazy. Hmm, that surprises me. I didn't see, like, 30 million people being... That excited to watch another Jennifer Aniston and um, Adam Sandler movie. I mean, I saw well, it. I didn't see it, but I saw like the previous part. I was like, ah, I'll watch that when I get around to it. Yeah, I I heard it was funny, so I was like, ah, let me watch it. I'm, I'm sure it's pretty good. It was it was funny, but it wasn't like side splitting hilarious or anything. Yeah, it was entertaining. It's it's worth watching. But it wasn't anything I was like, oh, my God, this is the greatest movie ever. Chris America, you have to watch this. You're missing out. This is the best thing ever. Yeah, I don't know if it's because we're older or what, but I think the last side-splitting Adam Sandler movie was probably Tommy – or not Tommy Boy. That's Chris Farley. Um, Happy Gilmore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it was Little, Little Nicky. You thought Little Nicky? You did love Little Nicky, didn't you? A lot it of was one of my favorites. Movie. I know. It, it's really panned as being a bad movie, but – I am one of those little little Nicky uh, fans that will go down in history of loving that movie. I don't know what it is. It just I really thought that movie was hilarious. Hmm. Now, Grown Ups don't was, judge me. Grown Ups was funny. It 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 was there. It was good. I think that was probably his most recent. That's a good side family splitting. movie, though. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was side splitting, but it was a good, cheerful. You laughed a bunch of times, movie. Yeah, no, I enjoyed it, and it, you know it's got his full cast of characters. They brought in yeah. a lot of the it's the Chris old, Rock you know, as well. Yep, He's Chris Rock, Tim Blatt Meadows is funny. Oh, I love me some Tim Meadows. Yeah, ladies' man. The ladies' man he, movie was hilarious. I, I did like yes. that one. <laughs> that and, is uh, a good one. Kimberly Amber Thiessen was in there too. Oh, she was so hot. 
You mean Tiffany Amber Thiessen? Tiffany, whatever. I don't need no yeah. names. I got her last whatever. name right. That's whatever. it. I've got a um, glass of Cavassier right now as I'm doing the show. Just letting you know. Nice. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> That's what we were talking about this morning. Right here on Scout Team Radio. We're bringing it to you fresh. And we're bringing it to you hot. Then that's what we do well, each and every morning, Beard, Monday through Friday. I did the theme park thing. And I know theme parks here is an Orlando thing. But everybody listening comes to Orlando or wants to come to Orlando to go to the theme park. So I'll give you my little synopsis. I did Universal Friday. We have annual passes there. And then we went to that new Volcano Bay, the new water park here in Orlando. And I have mixed reviews about it. Have you been there yet, Loudbeard? I have not been to Volcano Bay yet. So the way they do their lines is you have they give you this watch. And so you go up to the ride you want to ride, and it'll tell you what the wait time is. And you scan your watch, and then the watch will tell you when it's time to get in line. And so you can go to the Wayful, you can go to the bar, you can go to the Lazy River and everything. The problem I have with that, and I don't know how to fix it because it's the same problem at any theme park really, is some of the rides were like three hours long. And once you scan your watch, like, you're committed to that ride. If you go scan another ride, it cancels out your first ride, and now you're back. You're on the new ride that you just scanned. And so it's like, man, I don't want to commit three hours of my day in the lazy river waiting for this ride. So there was a couple of rides that we just didn't get to ride. And then there's nothing you can do about this. Um, you, you, you're kind of rolling the dice when you plan a water park trip in central Florida in the summer because chances of thunder – Thunderstorms rolling in around 2 to 4 o'clock and then hanging around for like one or two hours is, is really good. We had two of them during the day. One, it sucks because the way water parks and pools, if you guys ever been to public pools and stuff, if there's lightning just in the general area, they shut it down for like 30 minutes until they don't hear any lightning strikes again. So that happened where it wasn't even, it wasn't even raining. It was just in the area. They shut the park down. So it's sunny. Nothing's going on, and people are just sitting around waiting for the park to open back up. And then we got the full-on torrential hurricane at 4.30, and it ended up losing two hours there and just ended up leaving at 7 o'clock. So it kind of sucked. But overall, I thought the park was great. No, that's good. That's good. You know, the the storms thing, every day, you got to kind of expect it. And I think you did. You just kind of hope. You go in in the morning, you're like, okay, I hope it stays clear all day. And then all of a sudden, those gray clouds start rolling on, in in the on the horizon, and you're like, okay, that's not a big deal. And then when like within 15 seconds, all of a sudden the whole sky's black. <laughs> you're like, what yeah. the hell happened? This is like hurricane force winds coming at you. Yeah, I um, the other thing I did uh, in the morning on Fourth of July before we we started binging the Stranger Things is um, I've got my my townhouse I had renters in for a while. It's my my first house I ever owned. We the renters moved out July 1st, so we had to do some fix-up cleanup stuff. So I went over there in the morning and worked out in the yard for, for about two, two and a half hours, maybe three hours, until I completely was fried and couldn't work out in the yard any longer because it's 100 degrees outside. And then came home, showered, and that's what caused me to sit in bed for eight hours watching a TV show because that sun, that heat outside yeah. is brutal. Ah, oh, it's terrible, man. That's why I think if you do travel to Orlando, I said it's a roll of the dice. But it's still worth it to go to a water park. It's just, oh, yeah. it just is. But the other mistake I made is I, I didn't get there till eleven. I should have gotten up and motivated and got down there at eight thirty. I knew better. So if you get there at eight thirty and the thunderstorms rolling at four, you've been there for like seven eight hours already. So you're good to go anyways. Now, Chris America, have you ever been to Disneyland out in California? I have not. Me neither. Me neither. And. I normally wouldn't bring up Disneyland because I don't really care anything about it, but on Twitter right now, there is a fight trending that happened at Disneyland, and it I is pretty brutal. Did you see that fight? God, imagine going to the theme park with your family, and you're walking by, and all of a sudden there's just like a, a massive like little brawl busting out, and I believe it was all family. Like I think there was just, like this big extended family, yeah. and they're just and, and having nobody was internal safe. struggle. Nobody no. was safe inside this family. Women were getting hit. Children were getting knocked over. It was Old nuts. lady on the motor this, scooter. You see this poor guy. He's like, his job is just to go around the park sweeping. He's trying to like interject, but at the same time, he wants none of it. Because the two guys that were fighting were really big, too. And you're sitting here wondering, where the hell is Disney security? It took a while. Like, 
Yeah. It took two, three minutes, it felt like, before all of a sudden there was a ton of security. But it was like MMA style. These guys were like eyeing each other down, dancing around, looking at each other. Then one would come in for a swing, one would duck, and then they'd move out of the way. But then all of a sudden, it was all hands on deck. It was like, okay, yeah. let's break it up. These guys get broken up by other family members. And then it was like, okay, everything's cool, everything's cool. And then one of them would just get set off and start attacking somebody. And it was like, yeah. okay, grandma on the scooter, let's knock her down. Okay, no big deal. Um, yeah, let's see who else. Oh, women. Let's see. Oh, there's a woman. Yep, she's oh, part yeah, of this. She's mouthing off. Yep. Let me swing on her. Let me grab her hair. Let me pull her down. Uh, yeah. And it was it was quite the scene. Um, I've been to quite a few theme parks living here in Central Florida, and we've never I've never seen anything like this. This was pretty wild. And yeah, I've seen it, I've seen people get testy, and that's about it. And it's understandable yeah. because you got kids. It's it's like a bazillion degrees outside with like a quadrillion percent humidity here in Florida. So I understand when people get testy with each other or with their family members. But I out get in California, it. I, I feel like, don't, don't they have, like, the perfect weather out there? Well, I, I don't know where Disneyland is if it is. I know, like, San Diego's it's that, like, LA. where it's 72 degrees all the time. Like, L.A.'s a yeah. little bit hotter. Oh, is it? It's a little bit. I don't know. I've I, never I believe been. so. Yeah, you should go. And um, I've never been either. I'll be honest with you. I've never even been to the state of California. Never ventured out that far. Uh, you know, it's just one of those places that just haven't quite made it on my bucket list. I had a layover in San Francisco. That's it. Uh, we got Mike was it, it was, it was from Las Vegas to San Francisco, then to Orlando. Right, because you're backtracking. You're like, wait a second, this doesn't make any sense. Why am I going further west to get back east? Huh, go figure. There you go, layover, San Francisco. You're a big 49ers fan now, aren't you? Just like uh, Scott Kaiser. I actually was when I was a kid because I loved Jerry Rice uh, and Steve Young. Oh, yeah, there you go. And Joe Montana, or you're, you're not that old. I get it. I get it. Um, so I like Mike Berlon's little tweet here. He's coming in. He says, I love the dude that was yelling, I'm ready to go to jail tonight. Yes, that was one of the best parts of this video. He's like, I don't care. I'm ready to go to jail. I'm willing to do anything and everything to just beat up somebody. And, uh, yeah, the, the guy in the red uh, in the video, if you haven't seen this video yet, listeners, I recommend you going. It does have some profanities. Uh, it is a little bit more adultish. So if you're over the age of five, it might be okay for you. And so go ahead, take a look. And the guy in the red, apparently he thought the woman is the one that knocked his mama off of the uh, electric scooter, his older mama. So he just started whooping that girl's ass, man. This was not good. This is not good. I probably shouldn't watch this. This is better than the John Jones fight. Just saying, Chris America. Apparently out of all the offensive things we've said and done or not done for Scott Kaiser, not going to California is up there on his list. He's out. Because we've never been to California. Mm. Yeah, I no, I get it. I get it. I, I don't know why I haven't been out there. Like my wife, a, she's been out to trip, Disneyland. Man. It's a long trip. Yeah, I've it been really to Vegas. Is. I've been to Vegas. Been to Vegas. I've been to Arizona. Yep. When I was a kid, we drove to Arizona for my aunt's wedding. And uh, that I've been to Colorado. Awful. Those are all my western trips. That Vegas, sounds like a terrible dra- road trip. Oh my god, Texas is the worst. <laughs> It takes two days to drive through Texas. It does, man. It's, it was awful. And there's nothing there. It's just it's just highway and just dirt. There's just steers and... You know what else? <laughs> steers uh, and beers? It, steers and beers, yes. That's I was underage. exactly I what there is. Those beers. Yep. So um, you, know who, you know who else was out there swinging loud beard? Who was out there swinging? Vlad. Vlad the Impaler? Vlad was a Guerrero. Yes, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Man, killing it last night, but he is not the overall winner, right? He is the one that sets all the records, bringing the epic home run derby. Last night's home run derby, one of the best ever. It is in the record books. Vlad Guerrero, round one, sets a record for most home runs in the round. Comes back round two, sets a record again. Why not? Let's do this. Let's do that baseball. Did you have and a good what, time he, watching this? Did he, did he screw the pooch round three? Yeah. Well, we'll say uh, here. I'll give you a little recap here. Round two, uh, he goes up against Jock Peterson, and they both tie the record at 29, and they have to go into a, a little bit of overtime. So they do a little overtime, and then they have to do a swing-off, and then they have to do two swing-offs, 
and finally Vlad Guerrero gets the victory, but it was one of the be best matchups in a home run derby ever, Jock Peterson and Vlad Guerrero. And uh, the thing I like about it is afterwards these guys give each other a big hug, and you could just tell, like, this is a fun event. They're, they're really enjoying themselves. It reminds me a lot of the slam dunk contest where if you have the right guys in it and they go out and have a good time doing it, it can be a lot of fun to watch. And I think this is what happened last night. But the polar bear, Pete Alonzo, comes in in the finals and gets the 23-22 to 22 victory with some huge, huge hits. And he ends up with the win. Vlad Guerrero gets second place. But he gets $550,000 for second place. So I'm not going to call him the first loser. But Vlad Guerrero, to me, won the night. But Pete Alonzo wins the championship. And Pete takes home a million dollars for this home run derby victory. But lots of entertainment last night, Chris America. Lots of good fun for the entire family. Yeah, always good to see the home run derby, even though I didn't see it. I kind of forgot it was on. I had I had a lot of stuff going on anyways. I probably wouldn't have watched it even if I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll let you pass. I mean... You've never been to California and you don't like the home run derby. That's cool. Yeah, not that I don't like winning, it. It's just I'm not going out of my You're winning way over for it. fans. It's no hot dog eating contest. Let's put it that way. Yeah, uh, to me, it's just like the hot dog eating contest. It's like once a year. Yeah. Where you're not going to go watch like all the other um, p competitive eating events. You like watch watch that one. To me, the home run derby. This is the one like outside of a baseball game event that I would watch over the All Star game over the other things. And this was a fun one last night, but I do think it, it leads to another question, and this is something that Justin Verlander brought up last night, and Chris America, or Justin Verlander has brought up, and uh, I want to get your take on this. So Major League Baseball, they own Rawlings, right? So they own the company that makes the baseballs. Okay. And this season, they are on pace to set the record again for the most home runs ever hit in a season in Major League Baseball. They're juicing the balls, huh? Is that what we're saying? The balls are being juiced. So Justin Verlander, he comes out, man, and he is not happy. He he comes out and he says, this is a blanking joke. And he says it. He says, they own the blanking company that makes the baseballs. Justin Verlander just goes off, and this he's on pace this season. He's an eight-time All-Star. He's going to be a starter in the All-Star game. And he's on pace to have the most home runs hit against him in uh, any career or any season of his career, and he's telling us that they've been juiced. Now, Rob Manfred, the commissioner of baseball, he's not disagreeing with this. Uh, so this isn't, this isn't going to be – Justin Verlander's kind of right in this situation. So we've got the commish agreeing. If, if there was only a way that these balls could make their way into the crowd over several seasons and then we could – grab a ball from, say, like 2005 and grab a ball from 2019 and actually test these things. If only the public ever got the ball to go into the stands to where we could do this. But I guess that never happens in baseball, so I guess we're left just trusting MLB. Well, uh, Manfredi goes on the, the Golik and Wingo show, and he says that the results this year could be attributed to the ball. He says that the scientists in Chris America, what you're saying, the scientists have tested this theory, and they said that the ball this year is producing a little less drag than balls in previous years. So what is Verlander's complaint? That he's getting home runs hit on him? That his sport might be a little bit more exciting and he's he's got to suffer the consequences for it? Well, when you're a pitcher and no, your goal is it. to not hit them, have you hit home I runs? I get it. Of course, you're going to be pissed. But if everybody else is getting home runs hit against them, then it evens out. It's not just you, Justin Verlander. It's every pitcher getting more home runs hit against them, and overall, it's better for your sport. Well, I think it's definitely better for the sport. To me, it, it creates this excitement. One being the home run derby last night. Yeah. So if we're using these more aerodynamic balls that have less drag that are being manufactured by the MLB, possibly made a little bit better with a little bit more juice to make it a little bit more entertaining for the fans, then what the heck? Let's just do it. Of course, the pitchers are the ones that are getting sacrificed here. Now, when you're throwing a baseball that has a little bit less drag, can you throw it a little bit faster, Chris America? Does that science work out for you? Uh, Yeah, and they have been. 
Yeah, and exactly. You don't see, and you don't see batters complaining that the balls are juiced. Well, now because well, now that they get more speed, they can also hit it harder and farther as well. So yeah. you got to have a little give and take here, Justin Verlander. You know what they don't have a competition of? They don't have a pitching contest at the All-Star Game because no fans would show up to watch that. Maybe you're <laughs> geeky, geeky baseball fans, but just like you are a casual baseball fan, you tune in every year to see the Home Run Derby contest. I'm guessing you're not going to go out of your way to see a pitching contest. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to read this quote from uh, Justin Verlander and I'm going to try to do it with some passion because this is what Justin would have wanted. He said they own the effing company. If any other 40 billion dollar company bought a 400 million dollar company and the product changed dramatically, it's not a guess as to what happened. We all know what happened. Manfred, he said he wants more offense. All of a sudden he comes in and the balls are juiced. It's not a coincidence. We're not idiots. Justin Verlander. What, is, what does Kate Upton have to say about all this? She likes big balls, and she cannot lie. She cannot lie. Chicks dig the long ball there, Justin. That's all I'm going to say. Get over it. Yep. Yep. It's true, though. I mean, we got to we gotta keep the balls juiced to keep it, uh, Major League Baseball a little bit more entertaining. And what we got last night in that home run derby was the entertainment that we all deserved, and that's the entertainment we need. And you know what? If we bring in some excitement in baseball, it is just going to be good for these players' salaries, right? Because if you sell yeah. more tickets, you make the game more popular, and all of a sudden the – the income, it gets even greater, and those $400 million salaries, they continue to be a thing. I'm just right. saying, it continues to be I mean, think about this, too. It becomes more money for pitchers as well. And the reason why it becomes more money for pitchers is if all these home runs are, are getting hit on you, then your value as a really, really good pitcher goes up. Because now we need guys who can get balls past these hitters because we don't want home runs hit on us. And so if you just become a better pitcher, you'll get better better money. It's just like cornerbacks in the NFL are starting to make more and more money because it's becoming a pass-friendly league. So if you become a shutdown corner that quarterbacks have a hard time passing against, you make a ton more money than you would have in a run-first league 20, 30 years ago. That's just the way it works. So more home runs equals more money for really good pitchers. Period. End of story. Stop complaining, Justin Verlander. Now, I agree with that. Oh, Chris America, we have a hot tweet coming in from Scott Kaiser, but it's time for a commercial break. So our listeners are going to have to stay tuned as we've got one of the hottest tweets on the interweb coming at you next. We'll be right back. <laughs> hey, Kawhi, what are you laughing at, man? This isn't funny. Fantasy sports reimagined. FanDuel, that's what I'm talking about. It is more than just fantasy sports. It's the best way to watch the games, win real cash, and bring the action right to your living room. Just choose a contest, make your picks, watch, and win. And if you go to FanDuel.com slash STR today, you can get a $5 deposit bonus. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash STR. <laughs> Come on, man. This is not a laughing matter. If you've been listening to Scout Team Radio for a long time, you know that myself, Loudbeard, has placed a bet or two in his day. That's right, I've lost the beard bet, I lost the romper bet, but one place I don't like losing is when I bet money, and I can easily do that at my bookie. That's right, you can go to mybookie.ag, use promo code 12OZSports, and get a 100% deposit bonus up to $1,000. Hey, guess what? That is a lot of money. Do it. When I'm working hard, I build up a thirst for sports. That's when I grab a cold 12-ounce sports radio. <sighs> 12-ounce sports radio. Quench your sports thirst. Hey everybody, it's your favorite Patriot, Chris America, and I want you to listen every single weekday, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and on replays from 11 a.m. to noon of Scout Team Sports. 
Listen, George Washington did not cross over the ocean blue in 1492 to defeat the Nazis so you can listen to the same tired national clickbait sports stories. So once again, tune in to us every single morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and then we replay from 11 to noon. I will see you there, and God bless America. Welcome back. Thank you all for listening in. We absolutely appreciate it. Once again, we are Scout Team Radio. I'm Loudbeard. He is Chris America. We bring it to you hot and live each and every morning, Monday through Friday, right here on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. We are also being simulcast on the Full Press Radio Network, and we are a part of the Barn Burner Podcast Network. That's right, our friends up in Canada, Barn Burner, and our good friends over at Full Press Radio Network, and then our really, really good friends here at 12 Ounce Sports Radio. All putting us out there live and recorded all over the interweb. We appreciate those guys. Um, you can also go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts. Just search Scout Team Radio. You can find us anywhere, absolutely anywhere. And if you want to get social on the show, if you want to hit us up as we are live, you can do that at, at Scout Team Radio. You can tweet at us during the live show. We will read your tweets on the air. We will talk about your topics, your subjects, any of that goodness. And we encourage you to do so. We like the interaction like this morning we are getting some interaction here from scott kaiser and uh he's got a hot tweet and i teased it right before the break and i, I just want to say i kind of like what he's uh, what he's putting down here chris america you talked about uh nobody wanting to tune in for a pitcher's duel but you know what he's got, got a little bit of a twist scott kaiser saying i'd be there watch the best pitchers throw heaters at some dinner plates to see who's the most accurate sign me up um I'm going to just go up one, one step further. We're going to make it explosives. So, like, if they hit it, it explodes, and then it pops out like a, a, you know, it could be like a, a, a black powder or a, a blue smoke or, or right. something fun. Or, yeah. since it's 4th of July, it, it sets off fireworks. There you go. There we go. And, but now, you, the I did pitcher think about has that. to was, hit it at a certain I, speed. Yeah. When I did mention the pitching contest, I did picture some sort of, like, glass plates or glass windows with targets on them and stuff. And even then I just kind of I kind of get over it after a while. But one that I would watch though that I think would be kind of cool is if you set up glass plates all around the field and you had outfielders throwing balls to break them to see who's the most accurate outfielder. You don't think that would uh be kind of like just the pitchers where at, over time you'd be like, "Okay, I've seen it, I've done no, it." No, because there would be so many like close calls and everything where the pitchers it would just it's kind of like watching bowling or watching darts like they're so good at what they do that it you barely see any of them miss where the outfielders it, like hitting like you hit like going through a succession of like different spots on the field to break where it starts off easier and then it gets harder and harder to where they're throwing to home plate trying to break the glass uh with a dead strike i think that would that would make it more a little bit more intense, a little more uh, edge of your seat, what's going to happen next kind of thing. Because like, okay. I, I sit there and I think about some of the most nasty strikeouts, and they're, they're, they're all well and good. But then I think about that Bo Jackson just cannon from the wall all the way to first or all the way to home plate on a dime and got that ball, that guy out. Was, he's like one of the most exciting baseball plays, I think, in, the, in my memory banks. There you go. There you go. And the balls are juiced now, so they'll travel faster for the outfielders. Yep. Mm-hmm. There we go, great. a little juice ball. Um, well, or Scott maybe Kaiser agrees plays, with maybe, this. Maybe it's kind of like bowling. You could set up some pins, and then the, the outfielder can throw the ball, and, and it would be like, like bowling, kind of. You yeah, how many they pins. can knock down? Yeah. yeah. I, I think that would be great. Hmm. There you go. Or we could put just like a ball boy there, and the whoever's got the biggest bruise. Uh, leaves the biggest bruise on the ball boy. That would that's how you judge now it. You're, now you're getting sadistic here. <laughs> okay. Trying to beat up on children. What you watch that Disneyland video and you're all of a sudden you're like, Well, how can we involve kids getting beat up in this? You know, put a little raisins in my potato salad and I can do anything. Well, speaking of beating people up, Loudbeard, did you see this um this ice cream liquor photo that went viral this past weekend? No, no. You gotta tell me about it. So Somebody posted a picture of themselves or a video. I, I didn't really get the full story on this. But 
they they went into the grocery store. They grabbed some ice cream, opened it up, licked it, put the lid back on, and put it back inside the freezer and walked away. And it sparked a huge investigation to where the Texas, I don't know which, if it was state, local, whoever, but they, um, yeah, see, Scott Kaiser. See, now you're speaking my language, Chris America. MLB needs a skill competition like the NBA and like the NFL. I love the skills competitions during Pro Bowl week, seeing the quarterbacks do sort of the same thing where they, they hit a succession of targets that are moving and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, so they found out who this person was, and now I just saw a post of a video of a store that locked up the ice cream cooler and had a little sign that says, please see employee for ice cream. Is this what we're coming to, Loudbeard? Lock up your women and children and ice cream and because ice cream. the the cereal liquor is coming. And uh, you know what? I, this is crazy. Don't they have seals on ice cream? Like, don't they have like a plastic cover? I felt on like most some of them, them do, now? but I guess maybe maybe some of them don't. I don't know. I think it was Blue Bell ice cream. So I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know what Blue Bell. Um, I feel tweet like they at have a us if you know. Seal. Tweet at tweet at us if you guys know the full on story here. I just know I saw the picture of the girl licking, and just people were just constantly sharing it and making comments about how this is what's wrong with America's generation and we're all going to hell and, and all this other stuff. Yeah, it, the the weird part is is that probably happened 20 years ago, but nobody was there with a cell phone to put it on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. Oh, so for sure. So nobody knew it happened. But now that we see it, we all know it's just like this Disneyland video. They said that the, the um, Disneyland security came, broke it up, and pretty much said, Go on your ways. Everybody's good. But now that the video is circ- circulating on the Internet, they're now reopening the investigation, and they're going to try to arrest these people. Like, well, come little, on. Do you, little do you know, Loudbeard, um, Disney security and Disney's like thing is they don't want any sort of law enforcement involved with incidents on their properties. I used to work for a, uh, for a Disney college program. I was security where the, the students that worked at Disney lived. And always, they're like, unless the, the resident really presses for it, don't say anything to the cops. Like, keep it under wraps. Like, if we found drugs, we would always say that we we found it in an empty apartment complex or an empty apartment. Like, we never said, like, oh, we found it on a student or we found it in a student's bedroom. No, it was always like, oh, this was just found in an empty, abandoned area. Because they like don't want... Like somebody ditched it in a parking lot or something. Right. Yes, because they don't want the news to find all of these police reports that says like Disney crew members are just loaded with drugs. All right. Hmm. And then the, then the storyline goes, is the person, is your ride operator at Disney high? Check out the news at six. Yeah, that's, this is a good point. Um, just like the running joke here is you don't die on Disney property here in Orlando. It's like, they'll ship your body out and they're like, okay, now you can die. Cause they don't yep. want any <laughs> bad publicity. And they'll pay the family off like $10 million and make it go away. Like they all Disney, get non-disclosure agreements yeah. where they cannot say a right. thing. Disney is never hating any that this video came out. They are hating oh, that this yeah. video is out there because they don't want any perception that you could go to Disney and this happened to you. No. Yeah, they don't want anything like that because it's the happiest place on earth, Chris America. How, how can you have fighting in the happiest place on earth? Those people should have been happier. They really should have. That you know why else they didn't go to jail? Why is that? Because you can't spend more money at Disneyland if you're if you're in jail. That's a so good point. They'd rather you they'd rather you spend your money at Disney than spend it on legal fees. <sighs> Man, I don't know how we got back to this fight. I think it was my fault, but yeah. So yeah, I don't even know where I was. Oh, the 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 liquor, the, liquor. the ice cream liquor. So now you're gonna have to check your ice cream like you check your eggs before you before you buy some. Um, I sure honestly, no, when like, you first marks. when you first mentioned this story, I thought you meant like liquor, like oh, like liquor, and ice yeah. cream, yeah, liquor. Yeah. Uh, I was like, ooh, poker that in the front, liquor in the good. rear. No, that's not what I was saying. Or no, liquor in the front, I, poker in the back. We're talking about liquor and poker, right? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, but the ice, liquor as, or ice cream would be fun. That'd yeah, be a good Fourth of July be. dessert. Uh, well, I agree, Chris America. It would be fun. Uh, you know what else? It would be fun. Yeah, what's that? Play, playing some tennis in, in a thousand degree heat. Luckily, it's over in Wimbledon. Not as hot. Yeah. 
But my 15-year-old sensation that I've been hyping up for weeks now, Coco Golf, she got knocked out, Chris America. Did she? Yeah, I'm, I'm very sad about this. But there's another new sensation in town that is going to take her place, and that is Allison Risk. She, she's an unseated American, and she took out the number one ranked Ashley Barty and now is going into the quarterfinals facing America's greatest Serena Williams. So Allison Risk, if she beats Serena Williams and knocks out the number one overall Ashley Barty, which she ha- already has, she could be the new sensation. We just need we need good storylines. I'm trying to make a storyline here. Is it working? No, I, I like Allison Risk. It's a cool name. Um, sounds more like a Marvel character than than a tennis player, but I, I like it. I can get behind it. Yeah, yeah, she could be an uh, extra on Agents of Shield. Maybe she could have her own show, Allison Risk. I don't know. You think she could carry a whole show? I, I'm Googling her name, and I don't... It's, is it R-I-S-K? She's not coming up. There's an E at the end. Silent. Oh, e? European for America. I feel like if I typed in Allison Risk, it would still, like... Maybe it's me. pronounced Risky, Risky, Risky. Uh, Allison Risque. And it, it's Allison... I think there's okay. only one a- S in the Allison. You see her? You see her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's not, like, okay. young or anything, though. She's just, I think, got lucky. But it, we're going with it. She's yeah. 29. In tennis, that's old, dude. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you're you're past know. your prime at 29. I don't know about that, but you're probably yeah. right at your prime. Yeah. This is good as good point. as it gets for her. Well, think about the other one's 15. She's as Yeah, know. exactly. You're early 20s, you know? That's when I yeah. think you, you, you hit your stride. Um, on the men's side, Nadal, Federer, and Djokovic are all in it. I mean, this is the same story that we have played out over and over again. Every tennis tournament, it's like, all right, Nadal, Federer, Nadal, Djokovic. Nadal, Federer, Djokovic. Yeah, cool. No cool Americans. story, bro. No, not, yeah. That's why this other one, we need Allison Risk or Serena Williams. I guess they're playing each other. One of those two needs to win this whole thing. God bless America. God bless America. Who do you think is the bigger name, Nadal or... Conor McGregor. I had this discussion last night. Wow, this is an interesting discussion. I don't know how this comes up. Um, I'm going to say Nadal. Now, McGregor yeah. may be bigger in the United States and in Ireland, but right. worldwide, yeah. Nadal is a bigger name. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Serena Williams. Is that, is that the Williams. argument that you were with? Serena Williams and Vanessa, or sorry, Venus and Serena. Bigger names right. than any MMA fighters ever? Serena, yes. Any yeah. MMA fighter ever. Yeah, worldwide. Worldwide, yes. Yeah, okay. I'm t- Tiger Woods. Bigger than in any any MMA fighter, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just just making sure that I'm not the crazy one in this argument. Are, am I on your side now? You are on my side. Okay. All right, I'm just <laughs> telling. Okay. Now I need to pick the other side. Yes, Conor McGregor's bigger than anybody else on the planet. For those who don't know, I have a brother-in-law who's a huge MMA fanboy who thinks MMA is far bigger than what it really is. And he tells me all the time that it's the biggest individual sport in the world. And I'm like, no, it's really not. It's a niche sport. I love MMA, but it's a niche sport. And the reason why this argument comes about is he'll usually say something ridiculous like, um, UFC goes for what's best for UFC, not who the best fighters is. And I made the comment of, that's why UFC will always be a niche sport. Because real sports fans want to see the best of the best. They don't want to see some drummed up storyline of two fighters that make a better storyline than a better fight. And then that led to the argument of that he he hates it when I call MMA a niche sport. So do you do you agree with me or 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 my brother in law that MMA is a niche sport? Or UFC is a niche sport. Oh, it's a big time niche sport. Now yeah. I think it's getting okay. bigger in popularity it bigger. and it's growing and it's becoming I think it's more kind of international. Stagnant. I don't. I think it's it is probably growing around the world, but I feel like it's it's gotten really stagnant in the United States. Yeah, uh, I, I could I could agree with that, and that's why that argument's happening where there has to be storylines. They're yeah. going with the WWE approach where people want to see fights against names that they know. Uh, if you bring in an up-and-comer that nobody knows about, nobody wants to watch him fight because they don't know anything about him. They want somebody yeah. that they know the storyline. That's why that Conor McGregor fight draws a lot because people know who he is, good, bad, or indifferent, however you right. feel about him, at least you know him. And but that, that's that falls why he on... sells. But that falls on Donna. That doesn't fall on the other fighters. Like, Donna White should be pushing these other names. Did you call him Donna? Names. Oh, yeah. I've been calling him Donna since um, 
since Amanda Nunez called him Donna in the ring, and I said, that's it. I'm calling him Donna White from here on out. Okay, okay. I'm she glad says, I want to thank Donna for, for, for believing in me and Donna. Like, it was her accent to where she pronounced it Donna instead of Dana, and I'm like, that's it. I'm calling him Donna from here on out. Donna White. I think White. this is the real name. It, it, it is. I like it. You know what else I noticed is they um – they showed some like preview for a show where him and his buddies are like going and swimming with sharks. I guess it was kind of like a cross promotion with Shark Week, and everybody that works for Donna White eventually ends up looking like Donna White, and it's really creepy. I completely agree. Like Joe Rogan, it to me. Joe Rogan and, and, has completely transformed himself to look like Donna White over the years. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, it is he doesn't weird need to. And they it's creepy, <laughs> like <sighs> it's disgusting. What is wrong with that? Uh, is Shark Week coming up? I love Shark Week, man. Yeah, it's always remember the first when Mike, week of August, right? Yeah, remember when Michael Phelps raced that shark? Oh, it was so disappointing. That was really disappointing. I hope they And then everybody's like, I can't believe he's not actually racing a shark. And then everybody else is like, well, why would you think that? Because that's how they advertised it. Yeah. <sighs> now, what are they going to do this year? Is like The Rock going to fight a shark? Because I would watch that. I would watch that too. Mike and they'd Tyson hype it up like shark. he was actually, yeah. Oh, ooh, yep. That's a good one. Mike Tyson versus a shark. But then they would just like just, cheese it up and make you know it like all a, about analytics. You remember how they had the show Shaq versus? They should have a a show like that. Mike Tyson versus, and he just boxes different animals. Oh, like that pros versus Joes. Yeah, but it's gonna be Mike Tyson. Mike versus Tyson versus a grizzly bear. Animals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That Shaq versus show, I actually kind of liked it. He'd go I, around and play different athletes in sports. Shaq's entertaining, that t- too. Yeah. That helps it out. That So is Mike Tyson. That's why I'd love it. Yeah, it, it's always fun. Have you seen Mike Tyson's Family Matters? I did. I, I, I shared that the other day. It was pretty funny. I know you did. It's funny. I had seen that before. It's, it's a really good clip. Uh, keep it going, Mike Tyson. All right, so one other thing um, I do want to bring up, and this will be my last sports topic for the day. We're running out of time here, Chris America. But the Lakers, i got to go one one little bit of NBA, even though our good friend Jenny of Ohio, she hates us talking about NBA. But I'm going to do it. LeBron James, the Lakers announced that he is going to be the starting point guard. What do you think about this? Our, our boy LeBron, your boy LeBron, is going to be running point this year for the Lakers. I think it makes sense. He's the best player on the court. You put the ball in his hands. Um, I know Memphis Spence was like, well, then why did you sign Rajon Rondo? Rajon Rondo wasn't there to pick up 36 minutes a game as your starting point guard. That's not why he's there. He's there to come off the bench. Yeah. That's about I, where I like he's going to be man. the most effective. Like, um, They don't have any players. They traded away all their players. So somebody's got to play point guard. Might as well be the best player on the court. They keep picking up guys, though. They they keep getting these guys at yeah, these but uh, not veteran up minimums. Point guards. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, Rondo's going to be the backup point guard. Right. That's good. And yeah. then oh, they'll have another no name guy at or third string, and then keep LeBron running it as a starter. I mean, it's a solid lineup, man. Now, do you think at his age he can carry the load for 82 games a season plus a playoff run? You know what I think they need to do, and this to me would be the smartest thing is. Pull a, a Kawhi Leonard on him. Have him play 60 games. Yeah. Let him rest every, you know, 10th game or every 8th game or 7th game or whatever you do. And then um, limit his minutes. Don't have him playing 40 minutes a night. Have him play, you know, 28 to 34, somewhere in that range. Keep it in the sweet spot. But do like 34 is your max amount of minutes. Yeah. And have him uh, have several rest days and keep him fresh. Why, do, why you, do you have to run him into the ground? He's well, obviously getting this. old. Do you think that Laker team is good enough to win that way? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really? I mean, not we're not talking number one seed in the West. All no, you need no. is get in, I mean, the, get get in the dance. Yeah. If you can be a fourth or fifth seed, but you got to I mean, win, the, like, the West is a lot win different. Forty-four, now. Or forty-five games to get the eighth seed in the West, though. You still got to have a really good record in the West. Now, I, I meant to ask you this, and we only got a minute, so maybe we can answer it tomorrow, but. Is the East and the West a little bit closer now, or does the West still dominate compared to the East like it always has? Yeah, yeah. it's closer, but West is still on top. It's that Clippers, man. The Clippers make the difference. Yeah, Freaking Kawhi, Kawhi. From the East to the back to the oh, West. Yeah. I mean, even with KD and Kar- uh, K- Karai. Kyrie. Kyrie. <laughs> you know what? Karai. 
But Katie's out next that. year, so he doesn't even count. Yeah, it doesn't even help the East next year. All right, well, that's our show, guys. Hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. Again, if you missed us, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, ScoutTeamRadio.com. Peace.